Hey everybody, welcome back to the DZMC podcast. Boy, we've got a... I just wanted to step in here on a Sunday. I don't usually record on a Sunday, but uh, I moseyed on over to my computer uh, later in the afternoon today, and I see that the internet's blowing up because of what Pearl did. Um, I actually watched the full episode before it got taken down, so it was pretty nasty. And uh, so apparently Pearl, from Just Pearly Things, is uh, she's made an apology video already, so uh, at least... Just pearly, just pearly things addresses Nick Nick Fuentes interview. Don't go watch it; it's trash. Um, I'm not a cancel culture guy. Everybody knows me. Every everybody, everybody that's ever watched this podcast knows. Absolutely do not. Um, and I hope uh, Pearl can recover from this because I think internally, I think I don't think she's a racist at all. But I think she has really bad judgment. She needs to be held um, somewhat accountable. She needs to hold herself accountable for this. So I'm curious. I'm actually reacting to this um, this apology or her explanation right now live and we'll. We'll chime in if we need to, so uh, so stay with me, folks. Let's see. What up, guys? Welcome to the Just Pearly Things YouTube channel, and welcome to Morning Coffee Thoughts, where I give my thoughts over morning coffee. Today I have a chai tea. Um, I quit coffee. You know, you guys, you guys don't care about what I'm drinking. Okay. Today, um, I'm going to be addressing the Nick. That was sort of an odd opening for uh, an apology. It's sort of like almost joking. You got to take this serious, Pearl. This is, you're gonna lose some subscribers over this. Fuentes situation. Um, yeah, I, I know why you guys are here. Okay. That's why everybody. So, here. so, I wanna first say I take full accountability for everything that happened. Uh -huh. Everything that happens in life, as I say to the girls on my show, is my own fault. Mm -hmm. The fact that people are making these videos is my own fault. And the situation that I'm in is my own fault. Now I'm going to give you guys an explanation and give you guys context for some of the conversations that were had. Just know it's not an excuse. It's my own fault. I take full accountability but for everything that happened. Okay. So, um, but I'm going to answer questions There's the but. that people have brought my way. It's always a but. So the first thing is why did you have Nick on? Yeah, why? <clears throat> so um, the reasoning behind having Nick Fuentes on was because I heard that he was on the no-fly list and he lost his bank account. Now, from your point of view, you would think, poor guy. Why would you invite someone on that's on the no-fly list, right? That that would be a bad. Well, he's not anymore. That's how he flew, but he was. Um. So, I was more just curious why this man was banned on everything. Now, I, I've seen a lot of videos that say I play dumb or I'm playing dumb. And You're not I, dumb. I'll tell you what I knew and what I didn't know. So I did know that he was known a known racist. I did know he was a known sexist. I did know that basically every bad name in the book from the right and the left, everyone hated him. So um, the reason I had him on was... You know, it's actually funny because um, in a twist of irony, actually in an upcoming uh, podcast, we're actually having a reformed um, uh, skinhead on our show. Um and uh, I thought that would be a really interesting topic because somebody who was and practiced literal racism um, hated blacks, Jews, basically. No, he was an Aryan, right? And uh, I wanted him on the show because I've actually talked to him previously and he's not gonna screw me over and stuff like that. This guy, he's, re he's really reformed and uh, he's gonna teach young people how to avoid those groups and how to fall into those, uh, those traps, they, you know, and how they seek out the vulnerabilities. And he was a vulnerable young man, but. I thought that'd be a good topic for conversation, and uh, so we're going to have him on the show, but he's kind of like the opposite of what Pearl did. <laughs> we're trying to help people avoid that, that falling into the traps of racism and Nazism and skinheadism, and she wouldn't have had one on. Just had her on, had him on. So I want to hear what she's got to say here more. Because guys, people say that stuff about me. They say I'm sexist. They say I'm a misogynist. And you know, I really just like to give people the benefit of the doubt when I interview them. I, I don't go into interviews trying to interrogate someone. I just more try to listen and see where they're coming from. Um, in hindsight, that wasn't smart. And in hindsight, um, I should have had someone, you know, maybe Sara Garvey, um, maybe another content creator that could have pushed back more and really was more educated on the topics that he was talking about. No, what you should have done is had a person um, a content producer who would say, somebody, a no person, somebody would say, wait a minute here, uh, we should think this through a little bit. That's what you should have had. You know, your your own uh, um, 
judge and executioner on this one, Pearl, because it looks like you're the one who sort of planned this content. So you need somebody to, to sometimes pull you back because it's, it's easy in this industry. And I mean, I know I'm a, we're a very small channel. We're starting to grow, but we're still fairly small and brand new. But uh, it is easy to get caught up in your own press. You know, you watch your own video clips and you go, that sounds great. Well, we should do that. You got to have somebody to sit there and say, wait a minute, let's think about this for a second. And it doesn't look like you have somebody like that with you. You need one. Than I was, because I certainly was not an expert in any of the stuff that he was talking about. Clearly. Um, I did remove the interview. Um, I, again, did not think through a lot of the repercussions of posting that. So I just removed it. Um, if you do want to see the full interview, Obsidian did react to it. That's on his channel. Um, the intention was not, uh, I guess, to hide it. It was just, you know, this might not have been the best move. I'm just going to remove it now. Um, so again, racism has no place in society. And I do take accountability for bringing him on. Hindsight's always 2020. Um, I wrote down some of the complaints that people had. So if I look this way, it's just because... I'm look, I wrote, I made bullet points of everyone's concerns and I'm just addressing them. Okay. My, my Africans, that, that part. So in the heat of the conversation. Yeah. Oh, shit. Sorry, folks. I'll, I'll cut that out. I made some remarks to my producer, Blessing. Now, Blessing is a godsend, okay? Blessing has made the production quality literally phenomenal. He's so talented. Um, and during this conversation, we were talking about immigration. And I said, uh, I'm trying to get my Africans to America. Now, I watched it back, guys. It was so cringy. Oh my gosh, it was so embarrassing. I, I met my African employees. I just said Africans. The reason, the reason is because like, probably why never been to Africa by the way. ever to America. The African passport system is just more difficult than the UK one. Um, I didn't know, like Blessing had to go to the embassy or something to apply to go to America with me next month. We're going to go do some work there. And um, yeah, and so I've just found that the, the immigration process is a bit more difficult. So that's why I referred to them because my African employees, I needed more help with. And, you know, I was saying in the interview that I wanted more open border policies because I wanted them to come. Again, you know, um, I really respect the African culture. I had no ill will or malice towards any of that. Um, but I don't think anybody thinks you're a racist, Pearl. I honestly don't. Um, I think you've made that abundantly clear with the guests that you have on the show, the relationship you have with... Uh, uh, black people and people of color. So I don't think it's that. I think people really right now are reacting to the fact that you've had really, really, really bad judgment having this guy on. And uh, you need to respond to that, not to the accusations of that you're a closet racist or something like that. I don't think anybody actually believes that. But it sounded absolutely awful. It was so cringy watching back. You know, so it was stupid. It was stupid. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was. Now let's let's talk about the my after is the other one and then oh oh the joke about blessing being late so one thing that they cut out from that clip was that nick fuentes did say after oh i'm just giving you a hard time i'm just kidding okay now even so it was still in poor taste and I, what i didn't think about at the time was sorry for those that you, that didn't see it basically nick fuentes um was talking about he's always late and i said you're on time today Oh, Blessing was the one that's late. And it's sort of an inside joke here at Just Pearly Things. Like, Blessing is just, he's phenomenal, but he's just a late, he's a late guy. And every time he comes in, he says African time. Now, Pearl, Pearl me. So when I was referring, um, when I was referring to him during this joke, I was like, African. Now, I was saying African time, referring to what he says when he comes in. Now, what I realized is this was especially disrespectful um, because we did have someone that's a known white supremacist race, like, you know, making that joke in front of him with... Yeah, what it does is it actually, what it does, folks, is it actually, in it it fuels the actual racism in him. He actually, most racists don't feel comfortable wherever they go, especially in an interview 
type setting because they they know that most people aren't racist and they're going to want to they're going to you know take the firing squad right so by doing that what you're doing is you're giving this 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 idiot this racist this Nick Nick Fuentes guy a false sense of welcome comfort he's starting to feel comfortable in your space you never want that to happen that was an error him is just in poor taste and I did apologize to him for it. I really had no malice or ill will. Um, but, you know, stupid. It was just stupid. Okay. The next thing is I've gotten a lot of criticism for, you know, using the black culture and then I'm going right and and leaving it like that sort of thing you can correct me in the comments if i if i'm wrong but that that seems to be a big uh, point of contention um my intention was never to be you know a quote-unquote leader in the in the black manosphere or the manosphere in general i really have always just looked at the men as the lead i mean they're the thought leaders let's just be honest um and me i you know i try to support them in any way i can um, you know, I'm, I bring them on my show, but saying I'm a leader in the space, you know, I, I feel like women follow men lead. So I really think, yeah, that's just, that's just my opinion. No, the reason you're popular is because it, you know, that 80% of YouTube is, it's, it's mostly male dominated space. And, and you took a topic, uh, an uncomfortable topic. And as a female yourself, and saw the plight that young men were having and you decided to stand up for them. That's what made you popular. Um, and I think it continues to make you pop. I don't think this is gonna kill you, Pearl. I don't think it is, but, and it shouldn't. You made a mistake, but I, your apology is wishy-washy a little bit, okay? It seems like you're almost like, it's almost like you're embarrassed that you got caught making a mistake rather than truly feeling um, sorry that you did this and that you had such poor judgment to have that person on. It might get better at the end of this. We've got another five or six minutes to go on this, it looks like. So hopefully you can uh, atone for yourself somewhat a little bit better than you are right now because you're not doing a great job. Um, now, uh, the other thing was the demographic of the women on my show. Guys, I haven't done recruiting in months. So when I started, one, I never expected it to blow up this fast. I, I never in my life thought I'd have a million subscribers in a year. I wrote my goals for the year before and it was 100,000. I thought I'd maybe get 100K by the end of the year. Okay, that, that's what That's what we're shooting for, folks. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Give every morning a fresh start with Jimmy Jesus Dean Christ. Delight's breakfast sandwiches. Now, everything blew up so fast and I haven't done recruiting since maybe July. Um, the only time I have is maybe to help out if we're low on a show. So like... Or if there's a really big panel, like the Andrew Tate panel, I handpicked everyone that was on that. But in general, guys, I really don't recruit. Um, I think one reason that there have been so many um, black people on the show is because the recruiter that I picked was Nigerian. Um, and he just had the type of job that he could recruit while he went on the job. Um, yeah, that's actually one of the criticisms I have for her, uh, her show. Actually, uh, not so much the fresh and fit guys, because I think they have a really good mix of black and brown and white people in there. And also Brian clearly has a good mix too. Actually, maybe he might be more white than anything else. Um, but Pearly's show really is, you got a lot of black people on your show. I mean, not that that's bad, it's just it's not really diverse. You're not really getting a good, a good balance of, you know, if you want to talk about modern dating, that's what you want to do, right? You want to have a balance of people. That's why on our, on our podcast, we not only have a balance of uh, different races, we have a balance of age, um, experience in life, um, obviously race, um, sexuality. We have a balance in sexuality and gender. I mean, we got a pretty good diverse uh, panel on our uh, podcast, but maybe you should try and work on that, Pearl. Maybe you should take over some recruiting, get maybe a little bit more of a diverse crowd. If you survive this, which I think you will, and you should, um, you've done some good work, and I like your content mostly. And he knew a lot of people. He was already in the podcast space. So he was just a good recruiter. So uh, it makes sense that he knows more Nigerian women. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, but again, yeah. Um, yeah, but the point is, is that I think what the point of the people that were 
making those comments you're trying to make, Pearl, is that um, black women approach, modern black women approach dating different than, say, modern white women and modern Latino women. So it's, or even modern Asian women. That's, that's why you want the diversity because although they're all women, they actually approach modern dating very, very differently and they look at their men very, very differently in their standards and what they're looking for. Um, and their expectations. So that's why it's, I think it's better. I think overall, if you could strive to maybe get a better, uh, diverse uh, guest on your show, that I think that probably, I think it would probably help every show that does this sort of thing. So, and we're working on it ourselves. So, we actually are going to be the only podcast, I think, on YouTube that is actually going to be doing a live SMV test. We've actually gotten it back from the professors, um, and it's heavily weighted. Uh, I think it's accurate. Um, we haven't yet tested it. But we are live every Saturday night, so maybe this Saturday, if you want to get on, you want to be the first one to learn their live SMV score, Sexual Market Value, uh, join the podcast this Saturday. All right, let's go. The, okay, the next part. Now, this was the part that was probably the dumbest part of the whole interview. This was the, the stupidest, the dumbest, 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 stupidest. No, it was having them there. Oh, this first is stupid. Um, so I said that slavery was embellished in the interview. Mm -hmm. um, now that not only is that comment insensitive, it's not accurate. There were things in slavery that were worse than what was shown on TV. Um, what I was referring to, I like don't even want to tell you guys what I was trying to say because it wasn't what came out and it doesn't even matter. Um, again, if, if you watch the full thing, I was more referring to the system of using atrocities to control people. That's what I was trying to say. But um, to say that it, it wasn't, that, that it was embellished is oh gosh, so stupid, so stupid, insensitive. Um, and I, and nor am I, you know, sure I've read a couple books, but I'm not informed or qualified enough to really have that conversation. So not bringing, um, someone else onto the show uh, again, stupid. Now, the next thing is that um, my friend Gabby came on the show with him and she's dating someone that is black. Um, and he would say openly racist comments to her. Now, I I should have pushed back on that. Like I, I've been in interracial relationships. So for me to not push back on that, especially with all of the people that have been on my show was stupid. It was mm -hmm. stupid. Um, I just, you know, I was kind of like a deer in the headlights. I didn't know what to say. I was like, oh gosh. And the, the video we were watching wasn't even supposed to be about that. So uh, like, I really don't have an excuse. It was just stupid. And again, I take full accountability for this stuff. You're gonna, and you know, if I had to do it over again, I would do it differently, but. Yeah, you're gonna feel it a little bit. Um, you sort of tainted yourself a little bit, but I think you can recover. I think most people are forgiving and uh, I think you understand now that you're explaining it, maybe where you were thinking and where your head was at, but uh, really, really definitely poor judgment. Um, that's all I can really say. And it's going to cost you some subscribers. And I think the people that have been waiting to jump on you are going to be jumping all over you. So you've just, you've just put a big, big fat target on your, uh, on your content. I can move forward. And so, sure. um, Sorry, I'm gonna make sure. I wanna make sure that I addressed everything. I think I did. I think I did, okay. Because I talked about recruiting, I talked about, okay. So um, moving forward, I really would be open to having a discussion with someone that can bring more awareness and education to the situation. Um, so I'm open to you guys' suggestions in the comments. I also invite anybody that's made a video about me or has comments to address with me um, to go on Obsidian stream tonight. It's 8 p.m. GMT. Blessing will also be there. And yeah, you know, because I don't, I don't want to run from this stuff. I, again, a lot of this stuff was not well thought out. A lot of this stuff I could have done better, and I do take full accountability for that. So. You know, um, go on the stream if you got something to say. Um, I also would like to say, I really don't have beef with anyone in the space that made videos about me. I understand where they were coming from. I understand where I I went wrong. And I, I really think they had a lot of valid criticisms about me. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I really did my best to address all of the comments in a concise way. I'm not trying 
to play the victim. This everything in this that has happened is my fault. And I'm just, yeah, my fault. And I will do better in the future. So let me know in the comments um, what you guys think. Um, like the video on your way out. I, I didn't hear a sorry though. I, did I miss it? I, or even a, I apologize. Just a, I screwed up. I made a mistake. I take full accountability, but no. So I'm sorry, or I apologize for the insensitivity and anybody that I may have offended along the way. Ugh. Oh, I'm pulling for your pearl. I really am. But uh, it's not an apology. It's a, oh, I screwed up, got caught. I'm starting to feel it. And I need to say something and stop the bleeding. I think that's what that is. So I don't know. You guys tell me, folks. I mean, uh, I hope she survives this. Um, again, she's way bigger than we are. Obviously, we're just starting. Um, but it's, a lot of the content does overlap. We do a lot of the same sort of things. So um, I will leave it there and we'll see how the Internet, uh, we'll see how she survives. And um, we shall see if uh, she gets through this. Hope she does. Um, but in in regards to our podcast, uh, Saturday nights, we have a sexual market value test scientifically proven to be correct or within a few percentage points of what your actual sexual market value will be. We haven't even tested it yet. So this Saturday on our podcast, the DZMC podcast, join us because um, we want to have we want to have you on live. We'll have you on a Zoom call and uh you know, we want, we want those women out there that think they're tens <laughs> to see if there really are tens. Because, you know, every woman says they're a ten. I'm I'm what I bring to the table. I want to I want those girls to come on so we can see if it's actual or uh, or, if, you know, we're actually working on a test for the guys, too. Um, we're actually working on a test for gay people as well. That one might take a little bit one, a little bit longer to get back. But uh, uh, we are working on one for the guys as well. Uh, the doctors that are the uh, professors that are actually uh, uh, vetting these questions are actually uh one is a neuro, neuroscientist, um, a, neuro, a behavioral neuroscientist. Uh, the other is a behavioral forensic psychologist. So those are the two guys, both from very prestigious uh, U.S. universities. So um, you can, it's, it's pretty good. I think the questions are great. I think the way that they weight the questions is, seems to me like it's pretty accurate. So we're willing to put that to the test. And if you want to be on our show, please join the show. In the meantime... Hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, hit the notifications bell. And Pearl, I hope you survive this. I think you will. I'm not part of the cancel culture. You're not going to get that from me. But I, I didn't hear an apology there, Pearl. I think you maybe no actual I'm sorry. Just, you know, sort of. I get what you're trying to do, but there was no I'm sorry or I apologize for having that prick on my show. But uh, it is what it is. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Hit the like button, subscribe, notifications bell, and we'll be back next time.